I'm gonna go no changes. List has been working out for me. Let's see if we can get get another trophy with Scredless here. Guys, about Cleansing Wildfire. Cleansing Wildfire is two mana, destroy a land. Its controller can search the library for a basic land card, put in the battlefield, tap, then shuffle, draw a card. So if your opponent doesn't Urza's Saga, you can point a Cleansing Wildfire at it, and they get to go get a basic, but then at least they're not doing Urza's Saga things. And it replaces itself, right? You draw a card, so you're not down. A better thing to be doing with Cleansing Wildfire, <laughs> something that this deck does a decent amount of the time, not always, but sometimes, is to Cleansing Wildfire targeting Darksteel Citadel. And that way you get to play a Rampant Growth that says draw a card on it, which can be really, really good, especially in the uh, controlling matchups where you want to like get ahead of them on mana, get to a place where you can resolve like multiple threats in a turn and overwhelm counter magic. So it, sometimes it's a source of card advantage and ramp, and sometimes it's disruption. Overall, it's pretty good. The Citadels aren't just for Cleansing Wildfire. They can also, uh, if you've been them to Season Pyromancer, you're getting an artifact and a land for Unholy Heat. Uh, they're also juicing up the artifact count for the Saga tokens. Your Saga creature's are a little larger. So they've been Dece overall. Every once in a while, you wish they were a mountain, but I think there's been more times that I've been happy that they were an artifact land. Scredless. There's no Screds in the stack. That's why it is Scredless Red. Updating Stream Decker here real quick. Typically, Lurus decks tend to be good matchups. We'll see. Because we're pretty good at grinding, and we have a ton of removal for Luris itself. Blood Moon is bad in this deck because we're built a... Uh, we're in Urza Saga deck, right? So those two cards don't work very well together. I think Unholy is just better than Scred, yeah. Like, you can have Delirium uh, while well, you only have, like, um, like, three lands in play, right? And, and kill a Tarmogoy for something. It also hits Planeswalkers, which is pretty big. Do I want to play my other Urza Saga here? It's tempting. We activate this one and then activate again. I think I don't. I think I chill on Saga for Saga number two for a turn. Yeah, activate, activate, and then I'll keep activate. I wouldn't have mana to activate the other Saga next turn anyway. Sure. Swans is re worth uh, revisiting with Unholy Heat. Yeah, they have a bolt. This is a good turn to use it, hum. We're gonna tutor up a Pyrite Spell Bomb.
And I think I just pass. We could equip Shadow Spear, but I think passing is better. Leaving up the Bone Crusher Giant. The Graveyard Heat um, Bobble is also pretty good against Lyra stacks. Prevent them from getting anything back. Really strong. We could also sack the Pyrite Spell Bomb if we really wanted to keep the Chandra alive. But I think this is okay. that one. Maybe that implies they've got a um, second Unholy Heat. Because that was the unequipped one, right? Do I want Soul Guide Lantern or do I want Pirate Spellbomb number two? Pirate Spellbomb's so good. Knowing they have Lurus in hand, the lantern becomes okay. is Luris. So the dust is kind of settling here, and they've used a lot of removal spells, and we still have a Bone Crusher Giant in Exile, we still have a Seasoned Pyromancer in our graveyard that we can bring back and make some 1-1s, and we still have this construct that's suited up with a Soul Shadow, or a Shadow Spear rather. Usually I don't do a ton of sideboarding in this matchup. Cleansing Wildfire isn't at its best. But the sideboard doesn't have a ton of cards for the matchup because it's not a matchup that needs a ton of cards. We could bring in like the third of Raid over something. subs. Bomb for Shadow seems okay. You think they're a Death Shadow deck? I kind of don't think they are. I think they're a Ragavan um, DRC deck. In which case Ratchet Bomb's a little slow in comparison to a Braden. Usually the lanterns are good enough. You also have all this removal for Luris, so. You assume it was a Death Shadow deck? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I'll be proven wrong. Oh man. Poured myself a little bit of vodka. That's nice. It's a nice way to detilt a bit.
Yeah, Red Source would make this hand really good, right? With Cleansing Wildfire on the Citadel. But I think I'm gonna send this one back. Turn one on Holy Heat for a Ragaman too. This hand's so much worse. Because I don't wanna like pitch fury to cast to kill a Ragaman. Fortunately they don't have one on turn one here. One of our better draws, draws now would just be like cheap, efficient removal, Mind Stone, the Ragaman Dash. Interesting. Season would have been good. What up? Hey, Dr. Boyd Zerg, thanks for the three months there. You drinking some rum and coke? I'm drinking something similar. I've got some Tito's vodka and uh, Dr. Pepper. Very timely Inquisition. Not cast on. Turn two when it would have bricked. Right after I draw the Bone Crusher Giant. That's alright, next turn we can run out the Giant. Make them have a removal spell for it. And then the turn after that we can start activating Saga. Hey, you're very welcome, Dr. Boyd Zurich. These are the kind words. Glad they can't play that cough. Yeah, Bone Crusher Giant started as like a two of, and then I played it up to three, and then I went up to four. It's just really good in the Ragman meta. Bolt probably being the best answer here. Saga. I give it the Saga, they can just clear it with the Steel of Fire. This is pretty good. In terms of gumming things up. They can use like three fucking removal spells. What we'd really like to see here is them just putting Lyris to hand. <laughs> Because I'd be then like admitting that they're best playing. Is this three removal spells? It looks like they're just gonna play three removal spells. <laughs> dashes on. We have one card left in hand. So we can, this next turn we can activate Urza Saga, get a token, and then go get a Pyrite Spell Bomb. Which seems pretty good to me. And this whole nonsense. We could also float and make cough, but I don't think that's quite as good. Just getting a thing. I guess I could have seen what I was drawing first. That's how people usually do it. Mm. 
How's this deck been treating me? Uh, I'm 13 and 2 with it, with two trophies. We're up a game. This is our first round with it today. Oh, you know what this deck need, shit needs? It needs minus one mountain, plus one of the first strike land. That'd be good. The first strike of it's a legend. Oh shit, what up? I keep forgetting to add it. Hey, Dirty D and the Thunder Chiefs. So if you right-click the land, the one that's summoning sick will say newly controlled there in blue. I pointed it out a lot, but... It seems like every time I mention it, it's useful to someone in chat. Yeah, thanks for the 24 months, Dirty D. The two years. Appreciate you. There's no dunt to the bugbear now. We already have a lot of non mountain lands for a cost deck. Noise. I don't think I'm playing any of this shit. So I'm not gonna float, I'm just gonna serve. Cothweek kills people really fast. The opponent's already at 9. Cothweek's already at 9. Card is better than folks realize. Yeah, I think if you wanted to play Den of the Bugbear, you'd have to cut Shatter Skull Smashing. Maybe. Shatter Skull's really strong. Being a red card in Fish to Fury is sweet. Should have made me discard a card. Okay, I guess I've been Fury. Just keeping it from molting. This could turn on a fatal. Well, fatal push already kills my damn mountain. Yeah, this is fine. I don't think I've lost that matchup. I've played it like four or five times now. Starting to feel, starting to feel conclusive. I had some close games though. Still only dropped games before I am. Oh shit, what up? Apex Magic, thanks for the sub, thanks for the 19 months. A lot of our cards just match up well against like all the removal spells in the world. And that's what their deck is. It's just like max disruption. All this discard, all this removal. Saga, Urza's Saga is two removal spells and a, and a value. Fucking um, Bone Crusher Giant is a removal spell and a value card. Season Pyromancer. Season Pyromancer and Pia are really good at going up the board to make sure opposing Ragavans don't get in. 
And they're really good against spot removal. Cough dodge is most spot removal. You get the idea. Oh, shit. And then we just have, like, ass loads of answers for Luris and stuff. Hey, Malagor TV, thanks for 11 months there. Have I ever tried whiskey? I have. I have tried whiskey. I'm a fan. I've got a nice rye um, that I picked up recently that I haven't gotten a chance to try. It, it was a... Uh, I usually don't go for rye, but it looked really interesting, and it was like in a like super tiny bottle. So it's just like a little treat. A little expensive. I still spent like 15, 20 bucks for this tiny little bottle of whiskey, but I'll enjoy trying it out. Why one relic, two lantern? Sometimes you know that you want to crack it. Sometimes you know you want to hit the opponent's graveyard immediately, and then relic can give you that card when you crack it immediately. Soul Guide Lantern is much better on average, right? It doesn't dig up our own graveyard for unholy heat or like random season pyromancers that are chilling there. Keep this on five. This is a really bad hand, though. Dudetoy, thanks for gifting ten subs. Oh shit! What up? Congratulations to Darth Two, Dote Wade, Ono One Three Two, At Calic, Dejaz Games, Chucky Adam, Thai oh, GG Man, Snack Bandit Four Twenty, Four Twenty Plays of Hype. Slow as to pokes and Thorlock 9000. Congratulations to all you fine folks. And thanks again, Duty Toy. You blind keep any five? Yeah, I don't quite do that. Looks like we're facing Affinity. Post board, sometimes there's matchups where, like, a, um, a hoser, a hate spell, can, like, just win on its own. Oh shit, what up? Or if your five doesn't have a fucking land. Oh shit, what up? Oh shit, what up? I once went on a mold of one. I've told that story a lot though. Everyone's probably sick of hearing it. Yeah, no one no one wants to hear that shit. Tell it again? Oh, no, no, no. No, I'm sure everyone's sick of that one. Some people haven't heard it. Some people really haven't heard it. Well, I guess I can share. I should have done this on their upkeep, maybe, so the frog couldn't attack. So I was playing Legacy, I was playing against Dredge when we were going into game three. And my opener, my seven card opener, was not terrible, um, but it was just like too slow, right? It was like, I was on the draw and the hand was turn one Green Sun for a Dried Arbor, turn two Green Sun for a Scavenging Ooze. The issue with that being on the draw against Dredge, your Dredge opponent has already done its thing. So I'm looking at this hand and I'm all sad, I'm like, I can't keep this shit. Even though I want to, even though the rest of the hand was great and stuff, it was just a hand that like loses to dredge. So I send it back. Um, and I'm looking for ley line because I got four ley lines post board. And my second hand also doesn't have a ley line, and it's much worse than the first one. And then I keep on going, and I keep on going, and none of these hands have any kind of game against Dredge, and none of them have a ley line. And finally, 
I mulled a one land, and this is pre uh, the new mulligan rules. So I'm only looking at like four cards and then three cards. And then two. I'm literally drawing two cards into my mulligan, you know? And then finally my last card, my very last card, um, shuffle, the opponent cuts, I draw. And it is not a line either. It is a Verdant Catacombs. And I'm just like, yeah, all right. I mean, <laughs> I guess I keep my opponent goes turn one breakthrough, bend their hand. And they have no like faithless lootings to flashback or anything. They're literally just bending their hand. And I like slump down in my chair because my opener that's just playing a scavenging who's on turn two could have beaten this hand. I had no way of knowing. Uh, but they have like a very like below average draw for what their uh, for what their deck is doing. Draw a ratchet bomb. I don't know. Let's play Void Mirror. Let's jam it. Get those zeros. I might actually cut Koth in this matchup. Cleansing Wildfire does hit their sagas. Well, let's get the Graveyard Heat out of the way. We don't want that here. Anyway, so my hand is Verdant Catacombs, and that was their turn one play, just break through, bend their hand. I draw a Green Sun, so I'm like Verdant, crack, Green Sun for zero, get a Dryad Arbor. My opponent dredges Bricks. I draw another land, play it past the turn. They dredge Brick again. I draw another Green Sun Zenith and make a Scavenging Ooze, which is what my opener would have done. Only now I'm just like doing it like a sack off the top of my library on my Mulda one. My opponent dredges, and this time they don't brick. They make an Iona. And uh, I can't remember if they named black or green, but it doesn't matter because my Scavenging Ooze raced this fucking Iona. Because every turn I'm like gaining four life and exiling four creatures. And, um, and so like I gain four, so it's like the Iona's only hitting me for three, right? And then the Ooze is a 6-6 six, six, and then a 10-10 ten, ten, and you know. And none of their stuff comes into play because of the use. Um, yeah. And that was, uh, that was my Mulda, Mulda one, Mulda one victory. A friend watched that match too. He couldn't fucking believe it. Koth is probably at its, like, absolute worst in this matchup. Feels weird to cut it. Oh, no! I didn't submit. I have all these, like, abrades and shattering sprees and shit. And they, they might just... They... Oh, no, we're 64! We got him in! We got him in! We have a 64-card deck, but that's okay. <laughs> at least we have our hate spells. <laughs> yeah, I think the wildfires should have come out. Was my opponent salty? No. They were obviously like very unhappy. Um, you know, it doesn't feel good to lose to a mold one or whatever. That was perhaps more jovial than I needed to be. Is this the best Unholy Heat ever? They weren't salty or anything. Well, these are artifact land. These artifact lands are indestructible, so you don't want to cleansing wildfire them. But they usually do play a basic, yeah. Am I supposed to ult or just keep attacking?
Hey, good night, Cloud Goat Ranger. Shattering Spree them? They're lands? No, those are still indestructible, yeah. <laughs> Shattering Spree is still amazing against them, it's the other stuff, but. Alright. Now I have an entire 2 minutes and 30 seconds to figure out which four cards I should be cutting here. Or I could tell another story. Sh should I tell another story and then uh, submit 40 to 64 again? No, I'm not gonna do that. Wildfire wasn't actually bad there. I don't think I want four though. I think four is an excess of wildfire. I think I'm gonna go like minus two wildfire. Even though it is quite good against Saga. I think I'm gonna cut Akoth. Should I cut a Ragaband on the draw? Should I be cutting all my Ragabands? Kind of like this. We could play Ratchet Bombs. Just to pop zeros. Make them use like... the zero mana things. The Claws of Gig story. I actually like the Claws of Gig story, yeah. The Claws of Gig story uh, started because I was not super familiar with Vintage. Um, but I played some Legacy, and my first Vintage tournament that I played in, with like proxies and stuff, right? Uh, my first Vintage tournament that I played in... I didn't, like, super know what was going on, so I just, like, copied a deck that I'd played in Legacy that I was familiar with there. I just played Blue-White Land still. I was like, okay, well, I get what this deck's supposed to be doing. Seems pretty straightforward. It's, like, the same thing. There's, like, some power in here. Seems sweet. So I read Blue-White Land still, and I, I know what all the cards are for, except for these Claws of Gix that are in the sideboard. I'm like, what on earth? Sack a permanent to gain a life? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Anyway, I play this whole tournament, and I'm like, well, it'll probably make sense when it when it comes up. And I'm like a kid at this point, you know, I'm, I'm younger. In my in my teens somewhere. Not having a turn one removal spell is is pretty rough, but I think we keep keep off the back of the abrade, hope it does something. Anyway, I play this whole tournament and it never comes up until I'm in the top eight. And my opponent's playing Doomsday, and the Doomsday win in Vintage at the time. Nice. The Doomsday win in Vintage at the time used, um, uh, the stack would be, you would play three spells, and then the last spell, the second to last spell would be a Mind's Desire, and you would cast Mind's Desire, and you would flip over the Red Beacon, and the Red Beacon was just, like, deal five damage, shuffle back into your library, so you would resolve the Red Beacon, and then the next Mind's Desire trigger would resolve. And then you would reveal the same red beacon. You just re you just reveal it four times for 20 damage. Assuming you had a storm count of three, right? Anyway, so game one, my opponent does this. Does this combo. And they hit me for exactly 20. And I'm like, oh shit! Maybe that's what the Claws of Gigs are for. <laughs> I, all I have to do is gain a few life and get above 20. And then this doesn't work. And, um, I think I need to run out this Mind Stone. I'd love to abrade something, but I think I have to Mind Stone here. Anyway, my, um, so game two I win through, like, normal means. Uh, just, like, countering stuff and, and playing, like, a normal control game. And then game three, my opponent is on the play, and they go turn one, Dark Ritual, Doomsday Go. And I go turn one, like play out some Moxen, play a Claws of Gix, sack the thing, some things to gain a few life, pass the turn, and there's this extremely long pause. Because my opponent realizes that they're dead, they can deal me exactly 20 damage, and now I'm at 22. <laughs> but there's just this frothing rage that's within them. They're so mad because it's just not... Claws of Gix is not there for Doomsday, right? Like your, your opponent can simply... Um, do something else. 
they can they can simply like add one more storm count and now they're dealing 25 damage right they play a brainstorm or something so gaining two life is not an effective game plan the claws of gix were in the sideboard for oath i wouldn't find that out for like years later the claws of gix were for oath of druids um to like sack the tokens they give you so they can never trigger oath but i had no idea because i didn't play against oath in the tournament at all and so my opponent is just super mad they're like yelling at me about how bad i am and I'm just some random kid, so I'm just like, yeah, okay. I mean, can you sign the slip? I've got a... <laughs> like, I just took it as, like, normal, regular old fucking, um, regular old tilt. Um, <laughs> just, like, mad at losing to a kid, you know? I think I want to kill their Saga. I think their Saga's better than mine. And maybe I can cantrip into a red source here. That'd be real hot if I drew a land. Yes. I'm just gonna braid this drum, I think. Yeah, this isn't a Wendy's exactly. Playing P and K is pretty strong here, but I think this is good. Get my Valium. Oh, I wonder if Shadow Spear is better than Pyrite Spell Bomb. I'm gonna get the Pyrite Spell Bomb anyway. Yeah, it was very much a okay boomer sort of deal. It is tutored for another treasure vault. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Cool. Yeah, let's play this PK. Do we think I have to worry about Neoform? Do we think that the Neoform version? I have no idea. The way to play around Neoform would just be like kill their thought monitor. I mean, even if they are the Neoform version, they also have to be playing Grizzlebrand for me to, like, super care. Not all of them do, right? Some of them just have Crater Hoof, which wouldn't do anything here. If green, then yes. Okay. So you're saying I shouldn't let them untap with this Thought Monitor here? This is Neoform mana. This is happening. Yeah, so it ended up that they were the Neoform version, but they're not playing the Grizzle brand like I am in my build. So they don't have lethal here. Well, Grizzle brand wouldn't give lethal by itself, but it would be very winning, and this Crater Hoof is not. I'm at six, though. How many blockers should I leave back? Maybe I just leave the fucking Construct back, huh? Construct and Thopter, maybe. They're only at fucking 14. Why don't I hit them with my Construct token and my PNK and, like, leave both Thopters back? Hit them for eight. Yeah, I like this. They only have two cards in hand. It seems hard for them to get rid of both Thopter tokens. Certainly possible, but... Yeah, we actually played a League of Neoform earlier. 
did not do very well. Cool. You miss Neo Brand? You can still play that deck if you want, right? <laughs> yeah, the opponent's uh, artifact lands all had uh, indestructible. Oh, they lost to me in Spirit Guide. Okay, yeah, you're right. That deck, that deck, no longer a thing. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot what they would have lost. I actually played a decent amount of that deck. Is the regular of a new deck better than the Neoform version? Probably. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Neoform's sweet. <laughs> The vaults don't, but they have a ton of mana anyway. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, they could have even cracked a vault in response, huh? Yeah, Adnos is sort of a thing. Adnos is certainly worse though, right? Less situations where you can just like kill an opponent. worried about Neo Brand. I mean I think the I think the fact that there's no spirit guide means that Neo Brand is probably not very good. Because you can't really win the turn that you I mean you're not turn one Neo Branding as, as often and you can't win the turn that you do. Sans Dees. Could use a Citadel so we can wildfire ourselves instead of the opponent, but still fine. Oh, well, there's no, re no reason to, f the, to, to feel bad, Mr. Mr. Medocrates. Because everyone starts somewhere, right? This is a really old program. We're using Magic the Gathering Online right now. We could run out the Urza Saga here and then be producing next turn, but I think I like just casting the Wildfire. Cast the Koth, cast the Fury, then start activating Saga. Oh shit, we're facing Amulet. This matchup has to be fucking impossible, right? Dash or just play out a Ragavan. The high of going 5 0 with Koth. I mean, the sex gun 5 0 twice. Sex trophy twice. The thing is, trophied more often than it is not. I don't think we're going to this time. <laughs> I, think, I think Amulet's gonna show me what's up. I think we've beaten Tron before, but Tron's a little different than Amulet, right? Let's see here. Yeah, just considering a dash dragon man versus casting one. Should probably be dashing. The next turn I could cough. Than holy heat up. Yeah, this is a, a prop from the prop from the show. Actually, got it at a prop auction. Kind of fun. I think the 
just activating Urza Saga here. Which means we need Unholy Heat to clear the blocker so Ragavan can connect. So I guess we're going Fury Pitch Koth, which I kind of hate, because Koth has some pretty good pressure. Oh, we could pitch the Unholy Heat, and then use Pyrite Spell Bomb to clear the thing. I think I need to hold on to this Unholy Heat to kill a... something else. Let's do this. Let's Fury the Dryad. And then I'm gonna run out the Pyrite Spell Bomb. Tag with my monkey. I'm gonna use Pyrite Spell Bomb to clear that, which adds an artifact to my bin for the Unholy Heat. We exiled their fourth Urza Saga. <laughs> they were gonna draw all four sagas here. Transmute land, they could go then find Pact, which could then find a... So now a Ragaman serve is not very good. I don't have a removal spell handy. And the Saga's gonna make three threes instead of two twos, so I wouldn't be offering any kind of trade. So, I'm just gonna pass. So far, Koth would've been a much better threat than this Ragavan. super bad sign. They're not making a token here. Probably means I'm dead. Ragman's 100 ticks though. <laughs> yeah. That makes it better. So they're using Teleri West to get double blue and then they're gonna bounce it. Yeah. I think I just pack here. It's gonna go get prime time. The prime time is gonna go get more prime times. I think this is a fine time to concede. Our stock is Dece, right? We spit out a 4 4, then a 5 5, and then come both 6 6s, but I think I was pretty fucked there. It's my first time playing this matchup. It looks atrocious. <laughs> it, looks, it looks super bad. I'm gonna bring in Void Mirror. Void Mirror hits um, Green Pact. It's like a meddling mage for that card specifically. Not very good. Alpine Moon's gonna come in. A Braid's gonna come in. We do have Moon. We do not have Moon. We do have Pillage. Chandra's coming out. Maybe a Fury. Maybe a Bone Crusher Giant. Bone Crusher's not killing a lot here. Alpine Moon's still a moon. Fair enough. I think people mean Blood Moon when they say moon, but yeah, you're right. 
Does Needle hit Transmute? Do I want Needle here? Name Teleria West. I don't think Spree is better than a Braid because of, um... Um... The instant speed and the, the ability hit, uh... Creatures, too. Like, you use two of Braids to kill a prime time. I don't know. Maybe Spree's good. Alright, let's play Needle. Let's cut a few Bone Crushers. Let's play Spree as well. Hopefully I'm not too threat light doing this. I feel like I have too many shitty removal spells that aren't great in the matchup in. Not enough threats. If you keep this hand, you're just planning on playing the Season Pyrancer on three and hope that that draws something relevant. I think we go to five. This is better. turn Delirium on quickly. Yeah, I mean, usually you're doing it like turn 4-ish. But Saga going to the graveyard gives you land and enchantment. And you got a bunch of instants and sorceries and creatures and planeswalkers and stuff. And, uh, and counter spells. I think that's a little bit more relevant spawn <laughs> and the ability to kill a prime time. If your prime time is resolving, like you're in a good spot, you're happy. Your opponent kills it, you're like, yeah, sure, whatever. That's the best pillage you've ever seen. That's some high praise. Less interesting. Sure spawn. Uh, as a non-Titan player. <laughs> I don't think that's my biggest issue in this matchup. <laughs> Tell me to crack pirate spell bomb there. Look for another pillage for the sanctuary. Or even wildfire on. Um would be good. If I crank the spell bomb, then I can't get through the grazer anymore. I feel like I should be attacking. Would Bugbear fit in this deck? Bugbear. I assume not, but I'm gonna Google your card. 
before I answer. Oh, Den of the Bugbear. Yeah, the issue is the, um... The issue is the amount of, um... Uh... Well, they're not basics. I'm playing in my cough deck, right? So I said earlier, it's kind of competing with Shatter Skull. or something. I don't know. This would be good. It would keep the cough from ulting. Void Mirror did something! Yes! Yes! <laughs> Meddling Mage for very specifically Summoner's Pact doing work! Killed the Void Mirror. The turn they blew up two things by hard casting uh, Force of Vigor. They could have killed the Void Mirror, but they killed my, my Saga instead. Of course, Saga would have done some stuff, but. Wait, what did they just do? Oh, they cracked the clue. Sure. The Vesuva is going to copy Radiant Fountain. Now you go up to six. So I think it is Old Koth. this trade happen and save amulet save the abrade to kill amulet because i could abrade the prime time and then keep my fury around right let, let first strike happen i think i'm actually going to chill on the abrade they're only at six life and we have this cough alt Titan, we can do that. They have infinite mana, yeah, but the um, lands they get can like give like prime time haste, you know, if they have an amulet in play. What 
I should have pinged this current start when it was just a 1 1. I think I like pinging their face. <laughs> so we've had games where these Dark Steel Citadels have been super important. But, uh, <laughs> this is one of the reasons I'm not playing Den of the Bugbear, right? It's only so many non-basics you can play in your cough deck. Needle could come up. That's another reason to chill on the Abrade, right? They could have tutored for Needle if they had Needle post board. Sweet! I won a game! Not an easy thing to do in this matchup, I don't think. Do I need to make any changes? Chandra might be better than a Ragavan on the draw. Fury actually did stuff. That was awesome. Regibon for Amulet is very slow. We also have a lot of answers to Amulet, right? We have Shattered Sprees and Abrades and shit. Pillage. I think I just jam this again. I'm not sure if Needle is better than Shadow Spear. Whatever. Cage. Why do you want to get Cage? Cage doesn't stop packed. nice to screw up fucking online and then just have like a wall of people correct you. Welcome, welcome to my life. Welcome to my fucking life. Cleansing pilot wildfire that saga, but I also kind of need to fury the stride so I can get in. I need to just fury the dryad and serve. The wildfire could draw another red card though. We could cleansing wildfire cantrip into a red card to pitch this fury. So will your dryad that you already got value out of. We got an endurance. <laughs> What's it like? Pretty bad. My hand is double Urza's Saga Pyrite Spellbomb. <laughs> and my opponent has an amulet of vigor in play. <laughs> what do you mean? What's it like? <laughs> this is terrible. Maybe I can just find an answer to that amulet and be in an okay spot. Saga last turn, so I could be activating this turn. Yes. Okay, now you can, yeah, now you can ask me what it's what it's like. Oh no, the force of figure. At least it only hit like the saga and a treasure token, right? Mm. 
<laughs> Should I play my own amulet? Now we can play Shadow Skull tapped, and it'll untap. More importantly, we get another artifact in play for the, the saga. that so Ragavan can get in? I don't think so. I think I'm just supposed to activate my Saga, right? Definitely. I don't want to pop all my treasure tokens to cast the Shadow Skull, because then the Saga token is going to be much smaller. It'd be hilarious seeing the opponent needle cough of the hammer in, in modern of all formats. I think I'm gonna name this saga so I only get the one activation. Yeah. Well, they didn't play a prime time this turn, so that's fucking great for me. Oh, I should be floating. Fuck. Doesn't feel good, because now I have to burn a treasure. Shadow Spear. I don't have Shadow Spear in right now. I could have gotten Needle. Do I ever play Electric Wizard on here? I do like me some Electric Wizard. Uh, I used to play them every once in a while. They're a little abrasive. They're a little abrasive for streaming. Holy fuck! We won that fucking matchup somehow! That's not an easy thing to do. I think we got very lucky. Oh, man. Just a lot of, like, our draws lining up super well, huh? Void Mirror won me the matchup? Yeah. <laughs> If I trophy again, you'll never chat again. What? Now I have to throw it? I love having you in the chat, Tybalt. You do, Lazy Titan. Thanks for, uh, thanks for saying something. Very easy for me to forget. What do you want it to be? Do you know what you want? You want me to scroll through the options? Yeah, we just need a 2 no for our third trophy. Oh yeah, now it's a lot more break-even. Thanks, FPS. Do I have Gaunti? Is Gaunti an avatar you can have? Have I passed it already? I'd imagine I would have Gaunti if it's an avatar you can have. Seems like a thing that I would... see it. Only I see it in the avatars I don't have down here at the bottom either. That's what I wouldn't mind buying if there was one. Yeah, I don't think there's a Gonti avatar. Yeah, I don't think there's one. These up is the, is the option. Oh, you want Yargle? James Debouche is here waiting for the cough trophy. 
James, you were the person who watched um, uh, my win on a Molda one, right? In Legacy. I'm pretty sure that was, it was you. I told that story earlier. Eh? All right, Yardle it is. An excellent choice. Do I ever play Pioneer? Every once in a while. I haven't streamed it in a bit. It's been a bit. Yeah, I haven't gotten a response back from them either, Psych Stash. I also sent them a message and didn't get anything back. I did hear back from Witchcraft, uh, which is a band on their label, and Witchcraft was cool with it. So I'll play Witchcraft sometimes. But only their uh, their older records run Rise Above. Yeah, Witchcraft is fucking sweet. There's a there's a concert in Br in fucking Berlin in 2022 called like Desert Fest or something and the the lineup looks insane. At least for me, it's got like Electric Wizard, Witchcraft, a thousand mods, truck fighter, just like all these bands that I'm into. Yob, Yob's playing. I've never been to Berlin either. I mean, that's a reason. Maybe we'll be fine to travel in 2022. Or not Yog, Yob, Y-O-B, I don't know. I'm not great with names. Berlin's great. Oh man. It's gonna make me wanna go even more. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that there was a fiasco with Richcraft and Psycho. Seems like Psycho always has something going on <laughs> last minute like that god i guess i keep this this is not a good opener we have like way too much top end shit here ah, that's fucking mole this looks better to me keep this been like the fury Snow covered mountains to be better versus needle for a cough ultimate. <laughs> Usually the, the needle's gonna name cough before you get to chance to ult. Ah, fuck. We have beaten Tron before, but it's not a great matchup. Oh, I want my last, my last hand, huh? Had a cleansing wildfire in it. Tool this coming April. Oh, I didn't see where they were playing. I saw that they just uh, had a. had their shows. Their tour announced, but I didn't see where they were playing. Yeah, I'm down, James. I'm fucking down. I've never seen Tool. So I think I just make some 1 1s here. Draw some lands. Yeah, lands are great. My opponent's gonna play a cough. I'm gonna be sad. Or a Karn, sorry. Seven mana Carnier. Oh, we're definitely bringing in Void Mirror. You're right that it is, it's not amazing. But it's better than a lot of this shit. It's better than, better than Bone Crusher Giant. <laughs> Oh shit! It's Eldrazi Tron? Maybe we got a chance? And we've cleverly binned all of our spells so this Thought Knot Seer doesn't get anything? They, they do still have turn 3 Tron. <laughs> that is still an issue. some bones. You 
that homies in the tool army should be able to get ticks. Nice. Yeah, probably not going to play the Ragavan into the Chalice. We do have a Braid, so we could potentially, like, kill the Chalice and free up our one-drops at some point. It's worth chilling on them. Can't dash Ragavan exactly. Yeah, it's still a one-drop. Saga's gonna grab me a Pyrite Spell Bomb. It seems so medium, but it could let, like, Season Pyromancer attack. Do they play non waste sources? Are you talking about for, um, for Void Mirror? Yeah, they usually play the, the green one or whatever. Or sure, maybe, maybe Urborg. Specifically to get with Expedition Map versus uh, Void Mirror. You are a loud clamor. Yeah, there's one. The pillages, the shattering spree, void mirrors, maybe needle, maybe needle just to name Karn. The Urborg is for void mirror. This is the one of that they have to get with expedition maps so they can still play their spells. Respond. Yeah, Shadow Speaker would be good if there wasn't a card in place stopping in. I was trying to decide if there's anything super free to send at them. Is that a dismember? A dismember they're trying to play? So killing Thought Knots here lets me draw a card. Rally Smasher is much harder to kill. Or we could just use the Giant to finish off the Karn, which is probably better. Too bad I can't tap the Dark Steel to finish off the Karn, and then the Pirate Spell Bomb could finish off one of these other two.
I shouldn't be F6-ing. They can play another card and I want to respond by drawing a card with Pyrite. <laughs> I did not play Goblin Crater Maker, no. I'm playing a Braid instead. Crater Maker would be better than this matchup, for sure. Braid's pretty damn good, though. Jesus. I think I should be drawing a card here anyway. I think we need like Hardcast Fury, Kill Thought Nuts here. Draw something awesome, I don't know. I'm gonna cut all the graveyard hate. Oh shit, what up? Oh shit, what up? Hey, saw X46, thanks for the sub, thanks for 18 months. I think I'm gonna cut one of the Pyrite spell bombs. Just bring in needles, still have three, two targets. Maybe these braids aren't that good. Where's the Shattering Spree, right? Shattering Spree seems amazing. I like the Chandra down ticks on Thought Not Seer. I like the Fury clears Thought Not Seer really cleanly. Maybe this is another matchup where Bone Crusher Giants come out. They're not terrible, but they're not like great either. Let's cut this P and K. And then we have one more cut to make. Oh, you wanna play Alpine Moon? Yeah, I don't, I don't think Alpine Moon's that good against them. You're right that it is a non-bow with Void Mirror. Also, like, they're not as based around assembling Tron as, like, regular, regular Tron is. So it doesn't slow them down as much. And it's another one drop to run into Chalice, and... Mindstone? Maybe. I think we're gonna cut an Unholy Heat. Maybe that's bad. Yeah, the real is likely to have me Chalice locked in game two. I'm gonna kill one more giant. I don't really want to cut Mindstone because I want to be able to cast Fury and stuff. And I want my Saga tokens to be larger than the opponents. This hand's fucking awesome. Hopefully I'll be able to show you why here. Was Shattered Skull Smashing? Shattered Skull Smashing is a land that can also pitch to Fury, or you can cast it for value to kill things. It's very good. The only reason I'm not playing four Shattered Skull is because I'm also playing Koth in this deck. So usually you want to have some number of mountains handy when you're playing Koth. We're also playing Saga and Darksteel Citadel. I think you're supposed to Cleansing Wildfire your opponent. But I really want to target myself. <laughs> Alright, I'll target them. Really want to hit my own Stark Steel Citadel there. Get the sweet, sweet ramp going. But the Regaman's already ramping me. And now we can activate Saga next turn. Start making some juicy tokens. It's probably better. Hollis Dust? No, I'm good on that. I'm good on that one. Oh shit, what up? Oh shit, what up? Hey, Breathe, thanks for the six months. Just like that. Just like that. Oh shit, what up? Oh shit, what up? Hey, Admin B, thanks for the sub, thanks for the 24 months there. I think I'm gonna grab Needle. What's four mana Karn? One of 
Hercules. The great creator, right? Yeah, great creator. Just make sure they don't fucking, like, third Tron piece, Karn, down to get bridge. I guess we have a braid, but still. Yeah, Raggedy and Urza Saga play very well together, if you couldn't tell <laughs> from these 7 7 construct tokens. To game 3 we go. I think it's Mato. Awesome. Maybe I should be cutting a Raggedy on the draw. Maybe 4 is too many. Do we keep this hand? Probably not. This is probably just not good. If they played map, I'd be naming map, but I think I still want to name Karin. I think if they have map, they run it out, right? Saga rolling, or do we want to fucking play Season Pyromancer and draw some cards? I think I want to get Saga rolling. With the other Saga in hand, with that being like the bulk of our gas here. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> I almost fucking named that map. I do need lands to play my spells. Fortunately, I have eight drops in here, so the eighth land is pretty good. Pyrite spell bomb to kill this reshaper. I think I want this shadow spear though. And then I'm just gonna play this other saga. Almost takes two to equip, right? Yeah. I'm just popping this fucking immediately. Fair enough. It's pretty brutal. Shaper, which doesn't feel great. He's revealed a walking blista. God. I think I might be fucked here, folks. I think I might be picking up my first L this run. Dang. 
Yeah, this is a blister for four, huh? Drawing Nine Lands wasn't great. We still had stuff to do with our mana. We're still like sogging it up and stuff. But yeah, oh well. Could have mulled lower. Might have helped. Deck is still 16 and 3. Still churning along. I used up all my good luck. Against the um, against the amulet opponent, Tom. Um. Clearly worthless, yeah. Fucking open arm. Hey, can I met screwing? Yeah, it's possible that should have been. We were already on six, right? We did have those sagas and a needle. If the opponent had like a turn one map hand, then the needle would have looked better. Like the Altar Ragavans. I think these Ragavans were like two tickets cheaper or something, <laughs> is why I've got this version. I don't have a strong preference between the two. I think they both look great. You think I'm facing another Eldrazi Tron opponent? A murderer's Row. I'm playing Mono Red. Mono Red, no Blood Moons. <laughs> Amulet, double Tron opponents. No, no, that's not what they're doing. You were just fucking with me. Shocking themselves for Water Grave means they either have a fatal push for the Ragavan or they're playing Death Shadow. I imagine. Oh, they revealed Luris. Sure. Luris Tron would be a weird pairing. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Let's see how many basics they got. <clears throat> At least one. Playing fucking mill. first year. Before we map out the rest of our turn. So the Urza Saga is a shuffle effect, is the downside. Downside to that card. In this matchup, could end up being important. This Relic could actually be awesome if they're playing Vision.
Yeah, I hope I don't lose because I played this fucking saga. So activating makes a 4 4 turns into 5 5. Beats on. God, we got them at three. Three fucking life. Three fucking life. I guess if this saga shuffles, it finds us another pirate spell bomb. Potentially. We have cards. We have cards for Mill. <laughs> Elixir is something we can grab with Urza Saga. <laughs> These Shadow Spears coming out. Lantern just sacks to hit opponent's graveyard, right? the trap, but like, I don't know how relevant it is. Have I watched the Dune movie? The old one. Is the new one out? Ratchet Bomb for crabs is way too cute, yeah. You would much rather, like, a braid and just kill them immediately. Void Mirror stops surgical. <laughs> That's like, close to good. Wildfire is kind of mad. I didn't hate hitting their stuff there. Alright, I'll bring in some Void Mirrors. Can they win if I play a Void Mirror? Yeah, very easily. <laughs> it only hits like two cards in their whole deck. Turn one elixir, which seems really good against Mill. And then turn two, we can play the Mind Stone, and then turn three, we play Season Pyromancer and shuffle the Coastal Leg back into our deck. Oh man, I was hoping for a long pause. <laughs> Plays turn one elixir of immortality. You're playing mill. I was hoping for like a super long, really one of those pauses. It didn't happen. I, I, I'm not getting my satisfaction. October twenty second. Yeah, that makes sense. I think it might be a. Uh, it might be in Europe by now. I think they might have released it earlier in Europe. Some folks might have seen it. Well, it's not open here.
Pasha's just milled a fucking shitload of cards. Mill is better than 2 3, yeah. It's like a 2 2 ish deck. I can give you like a rough estimate of his metagame presence, but it's a bit less than 2%, in between 1 or 2. It's like 2% 2 of the meta. I think that's like solidly tier 2 range for, um, for modern. That puts it in the same boat as like Affinity, Death Shadow. Hardened scales. Living in, that sort of thing. Am I getting archive trapped? Is there a point in playing a tier 2 deck when you can play a tier 1? What? Well, not all tier 1 decks are have like an equal win rate against the field, right? Sometimes like a tier 2 or a tier 3 deck, a deck that is less represented, can be a better choice for a particular tournament or a particular metagame. But if you're asking that question that way, then no, there's no reason. <laughs> Usually I like to play decks that target the best deck. Usually suits me pretty well. This Tasha has also mixed, milled a lot of cards, but did not get the Eldrazi. There's still an Eldrazi in this deck. We have some nice pressure going on. On board Elixir, well, wait, right now I don't have a graveyard, so the on board Elixir is not winning in and of itself. Like upkeep, unholy heat a creature and sack it or something. I guess it shovels itself back in. Am I overplaying into a sweeper? Am I playing this giant? Feels like it. Tasha's does exile, yeah. They've already played two Tashas though, so we're probably fine. Yep. Yep. All right, 17 and three, 17 and three with Mono Red Cough. I don't hate it, I don't hate it. Didn't collect our third trophy, but every run has been positive. Yeah, deck's fucking great. Yep. <laughs> God damn, I'm good. Good talk, Caleb. <laughs> Glad we're all here to listen to you compliment yourself. Oh, it's satisfying. You when you when you build a lot of decks, when you like do, do a lot of like brewing and tinkering around and stuff. Um, 
there's like a lot of failure rate, right? There's a high failure rate. Maybe like 10% of brews are actually good and actually worth playing out and stuff. Nice to crush some dicks with your own list every once in a while. As it were.